Hello, this is Brian, and today's lab is the identification of cations in solution, barium, strontium, calcium, and magnesium. I've already opened the uh, virtual chemistry lab. I'm going over here to the worksheets, descriptive chemistry. I'm going to scroll down here to the name of the lab. And opening that up, and here it goes. As you can see, everything is all set up for us again. Now I'm going to grab a test tube and bring it over here to the test tube stand. This is what they call the metal test tube stand, this is your test tube rack. Um, I'm going to uh, notice that if I put this in the rack, these things are darkened. You can't activate them. It needs to be in the stand for you to really do anything. So it says to click on meaning put into the test tube the ion. So I'll click on the barium and it automatically appears in there. Strontium, calcium, magnesium. Where is that? There we go. So now we have all of them. And you can see right here, this is where the uh, test tube is. But on the expanded close-up view, it tells you what exactly we've got in our test tube. Now the worksheet tells you to put the test tube in the blue rack, uh, but that disables all the functions down here pretty much. I'm going to put it back in the test tube stand. Notice when I, as soon as I mouse over, all the chemicals over here are listed. I'm going to put it back in the stand. And now uh, I want to go over a couple things with you that are not explicitly mentioned in the worksheet that you'll need to know. We've got a bunch of items down here that we can use. Centrifuge, which you activate just by clicking on it. You've got a flame, flame test, flame test with a cobalt glass plate in the way of the flame so that uh, so you can see the colors differently. This is the decant button. I'm not clicking on them. I'm just mousing them over, uh, over them right now so you can see wh what these things do. This is the divide hot plate, or heater as they call it, pH solution. If you click on that, I'll, I'll click on that right now. You can see over here that on the test tube stand, a, pH, a piece of pH paper appears, like right over here. And it indicates what that pH is. pH vapor, so pH paper held over the mouth of the test tube to see what pH the vapor has. A nose for sniffing. Up here we've got an odor key, so you can see that. And lastly, stirring. You click on that and it stirs your solution. And by the way, the uh, hot plate over here, if I click on it, it appears there below the stand and starts heating your solution. If I click back, it goes away. So. Keep that in mind as we proceed. Now, before we actually do chemical tests, we're going to do is the worksheet uh, suggests. So I'm going to hit this divide button, which just divides it in half or actually makes a new test tube there with the same stuff that's in our test tube on the stand. And that's simply in case we make a mistake, we've got an extra uh, sample of the original to work with. Now, Read number three in the worksheet about the solubility rules, about how to identify your cations. Uh, there are different ways to do this. I'm going to try one way to demonstrate which ions are in the solution. Now, this is a known solution, but later you'll do these qualitative tests with an unknown solution. Okay, let's try some chemical tests out. I'm going to add some nitric acid. I'm just going to click on it. I think that puts that in there. You could drag it over and do it that way. I don't think that actually does anything extra. Just seems to add it when you click on it. Now I'm going to add some sodium sulfate. Click there and check it out over here. Now we see it turns white. Definitely looks like a precipitate. And if you look here at the list of chemicals, we see that uh, we have a precipitate barium sulfate. 
We have the same chemicals otherwise, but uh, no barium ion free, just the barium sulfate precipitate. And there's some sodium because we added sodium sulfate, so that sodium ion is in solution. Now, just as we do in real lab, we're going to use the centrifuge. It's a whole lot easier here. You just click on the centrifuge and it spins it right there. Don't try to drag it over, it will never land in there. It's much easier than that. You just click it like I did. You can see it spun down, precipitates at the bottom. And um, now I'm going to go over here to the decant. And after a second, you see that this appears there. That's my decanted solution. Now, that's the precipitate. I'm just going to put that over there out of the way for now. Um, I could drag it over, throw it away. Maybe I'll do that. But whatever you do, don't, don't click on that red can, that red waste can, because that'll clear your lab out. Now, this is the new one that came. This is the uh, our solution, the remaining solution after the barium precipitate was taken out. Now I'm putting it back. So we know we've got barium in there. I'm gonna try a new test now. I'm gonna test uh, for the strontium ion, and I'm gonna to try to make it pH four. I'm gonna click on that and check it out. Look what happened, turned white. Uh, by the way, you can uh, click on that pH solution, that little piece of paper there. Shows at the bottom there that it looks like it's pH 4. And uh, white solution, strontium sulfate is precipitated out at that pH. And uh, there we go. We've proved strontium. So again, I'm going to uh, remove the precipitate. Just click there. It spins it down, as you can see. I'm going to decant. And again, it appears there. I'm going to move, move that over the way, out of the way. That's just my strontium precipitate. I'm going to put that back on there. No, we still have the original that I divided earlier, the original. But we're not using that now. We've removed barium and strontium now, and uh, we're going to test for the other two ions. I'm going to test for calcium now. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make the solution pH 7, and then I'm going to heat it. So first, I'm going to go over to the pH 7 bottle, click on that. You can hear that it does something. I can test it with the pH paper if I want to show that it's 7. And if I do, it should look yellow here. Let's try that. Over there, doesn't look quite yellow, but uh, I'm going to assume it actually is yellow. I'll click it again, make sure. Okay, now I'm going to heat it. Click on the heater, and uh, it's automatically on. Automatically heats it instantly. And you, you can see it's made a white precipitate. Not as obvious as last time, but uh, the chemical list here does show that uh, we have calcium sulfate, and that would be the precipitate. Okay, I could take that hot plate away. Now, you know, in real life, of course, it wouldn't heat it instantly like that. We would have to actually put this in a beaker of water and put that on the hot plate for a while or hold this over a Bunsen burner to actually get that precipitate. But uh, in the virtual lab here, things work much more quickly. Again, I'm going to spin it in the centrifuge. See, we proved uh, we have our precipitate. I'm going to decant. There we go. I'll set this aside again. Put our remaining solution back there. You can see we've taken out the calcium. So we only have one ion left that we originally started with, the magnesium. And the sodium came from one of our tests. We can ignore that one for now. Last, I'm going to test for the magnesium ion. So what I'm going to try here is this. I'm going to grab some sodium hydroxide, click on it and check it out. Immediately, it's in there. It's dispensed in there, and we seem to have cloudiness, another sign of a precipitate. We can see the chemical list, magnesium hydroxide, a precipitate. So uh, we've shown that we have uh, magnesium in there. If I want, I could spin it. 
You can't. There we go. Move that out of the way. And we can see that we've extracted, precipitated out all of the ions we started with. Nothing's left but uh, water and uh, some sodium, a bystander. Okay, after doing those tests on the known solution, we're going to try a practice unknown, which is step four on your worksheet. Uh, your worksheet says to click on the unknowns label, though that one's not active right now. Uh, if you click right there, nothing will happen. Uh, you just see the arrow there where the mouse pointer is. It would turn into a hand if that were an active option to use. So what you actually have to do, uh, which it doesn't say on the worksheet, what you need to do is clear out the lab. Click on this uh, red waste can, and it clears out. And now the little hand appears, and you can create an active uh, a practice unknown. So I'm going to click on the unknowns, and now we see we have activity here. All these things are uh, live options again. The worksheet says to click on the barium, strontium, calcium, and magnesium bottles. So barium, strontium, magnesium. Where's the calcium? There we go. You can see that the ones I clicked on are grayed out, showing that we uh, have indeed put them into the unknown. And uh, the worksheet also says to change these to a minimum of zero, maximum of four, meaning that our practice unknown will have up to four, all four of those ions, or none of them could just be water, or one, two, or three. And it says to cr click Create Unknown. So after I clicked up here, you might not have seen it, but over here we have an unknown. It says practice unknown. You can see that over here. I'm just going to drag this guy over here to our test tube rack. And when you mouse over the test tube, you can see it says practice unknown. Now you're going to test your practice unknown. I'm going to put it on the stand and I'm going to hit divide again just so in case I make a mistake, I've got an extra. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to repeat all the procedures now, but you can do this, your, uh, your practice unknown, similar to what I did earlier, or you can use whatever qualitative analysis test you would like. When you're done with your qualitative test, check your results. On the worksheet, it says to click the lab book, and on the left page, click the report button right down there, and we have some options here. Select the, uh, the ions that you think are present in your unknown and click Submit. I'm going to select all four ions just to see what happens. I don't actually know what's in there. I'm going to hit Submit. Ah, and see, it tells us what we got wrong and right. As it turned out in this practice unknown, these were present, these three ions. That one I was wrong about. Hopefully, if I'd actually done all the chemical tests with this practice unknown, I would have done better than that. So I'm done. I'm going to clear that out of the way. I can uh, clear the lab by clicking the red waste can. And uh, as soon as I do that, I say I've got another. This just appeared there magically. I've got another unknown practice unknown, that is. I could drag this over here and... Uh, and try again. It it, it can have uh, again. It can have any all four, none of the four, one, two, three, of the ions. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but uh, we could start off and we could just repeat. And you can do this as many times as you want till you feel you're ready to do the real unknown. I'm I'm going to clear the lab. Click on the clipboard. Go to basic knowns and unknowns and alkaline earth metal unknowns. Do your uh, real unknown just like you did your practice unknown, and don't forget to record your unknown number in the close-up window.
And that's it.